How do I start this thing? Have you plugged the bloody USB in? Yeah, it's in. Nah, man, that's the wrong port. Oh, wait, it's flashing now. Is it? Re- oh, wait, it's recording. Well, let's start this thing, fool. Hello, everyone. I'm Amelia. Hi, I'm Sam. Welcome to Ask the Duo podcast, a podcast where we get deep into those late night, unfiltered conversations. We'll be discussing all things lifestyle, relationship, mindset, and more. All right, let's get to it. Welcome back. Eh, hey, yo bo se yo. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so we just came back from a two-week hiatus. Though hiatus. For the listeners, I mean, it's kind of been continuous, but... Yeah, no one knows. It's yeah. a secret between us. Nah. <laughs> yeah, so we've been on holidays, just a break, a getaway. Mm-hmm. And it has been quite some time since we have done that. Yeah, like for us, as a couple, we haven't had any getaways or holidays for us. Um, Just to be together, like enjoy the time together. We haven't had that in a while since COVID pretty much. And for me personally, I haven't had any breaks or holidays for, let's say, the last four years, I think. I've just been, you know, back-to-back work and just, yeah, living life through growing my career. Yeah, I I feel that we were probably more focused on our individual careers, which we've probably drained ourselves in terms of focusing on that. So it's mm. good to sort of step away and have that break to yeah. get away. Yeah, it was really good, and I haven't been to... Well, we went to this place called Cabarita Beach, which is just off Byron Bay, and it's such a nice place, and the cliff that was up on the beach was such a nice place that I never thought, you know, Queen... Well, it was New South Wales, but on the border that we'd have. Mm. Yeah, it was... was, I can't even explain. It was like a awesome, like, little spot. It was mm. so high, it was freaking cold, but, like, the cliff was pretty scary. But it was awesome, like... I'm not scared of heights, so I thought it was really cool because when you stand on the top of the cliff, like, it's not a small cliff, it's got grass and it's level and some rocks, obviously, but you can look straight down into the waters crashing into the rocks and stuff, which is really nice. Like, obviously, be careful when you're on the edge, but... Just seeing that from a different angle as opposed to you just standing on the beach and watching the waves crash through, that was really, just really beautiful. Mm, Yeah, it was a really nice view. But into our segue. Yeah, so saying that we haven't been on a break, we've just been individually trying to grow our careers, so that's a journey in itself. Which brings into what we were going to talk about, and it's about how to trust the process and how to enjoy the journey especially when you're working so hard to try and get up to where you want to go to Mm, yeah so what i wanted to ask you was specifically to your career as you're working in the banking finance it's it's a hard scene like especially when you're trying to work your way up did you ever doubt yourself or not enjoy the process or the journey as you were working through getting to where you want to go yeah, of course. There has been numerous times where I've had to stop and say to myself, what am I doing? Why am I here? And trying to understand what, where, how and why mm. as to the direction or the pathway that I wanted to take. Yeah, so your journey was more so you didn't know what the end goal was and you didn't know where to go. I think it's half half. I think it was the I didn't know what end goal I wanted to take and in banking and finance is so broad. You can go in different areas, you can specialize in different things. So it's more like, well, what do I truly enjoy in following that path to get to that point? Would you say you have an end goal now or you have a better direction of where you want to go, like somewhere that you want to reach ideally? I have a basic idea as to where I want to go, though it's not my dead set 
I want to go there. But the good thing about banking finance though is even if I did go to that end goal or reach that end goal, I can still take other directions if needed. Yep. So that that's the the benefit of being in this industry is is you can build relationships in different areas and, and sort of branch to those directions. Yeah. So you didn't know the direction or where you want to go. So what kept you going and just keep moving through the journey? Well, at first I didn't trust the direction or you want to call it trust the process. I didn't trust it because... But what made you not trust it? Like how do you see not trusting the process? I just didn't have confidence in the direction that I had to take to get to that point. I saw the rough end goal, but I didn't realize how much work and who I needed to be around or surround myself with in order to get to that point. Mm. And that put me in situations where basically I just didn't want to take that direction. I wouldn't say didn't want to take direction, but I just didn't, I wasn't confident in taking that route because I wasn't even sure if that was the right thing for me. So would you say that you wanted to give up on that career and that industry or? Well, like I said, banking finance is such a broad industry. So there was definitely moments where I wanted to just, I wouldn't say stop, but redirect to Mm. a different area yeah but to keep moving forward in that path was to really talk to my peers my mentors who have done those I guess goals or met those goals who've done who've been there done that that really helped me get an understanding as to what is involved and where I can get to Mm. so I think having those conversations with people really Mm. helped me have clarity Yeah, I think that's really good because when you embark on a journey, it shouldn't be something that you do alone and it's good that you found people like peers or mentors or, you know, managers that can help you and just share their knowledge and their journey may not be the same as yours, but at least they can give you a little piece of what they've learned when they've gone on their own journey to help you continue yours and it kind of ignites your passion to keep going and not give up yeah that that is quite true in in that fact because once having that conversation that really did motivate me and go oh shit okay cool based on their experiences this is what they went through Hmm. though yes I could go in the similar direction but my outcome may not be the same experience but it's good to know how or what others had to go through to get to that point yeah which is quite similar to me like when I so I'm a designer and you know I went into this industry wanting to become a designer like my end goal was you know become known for what I do and known for my work and, you know, obviously design is a very competitive space, not competitive like people like I'm better than you or stuff like that. But design is so subjective. So the people that you design to or speak to is very subjective. Mm. And that's why it makes it hard. And just instead of having mentors, because I actually don't have many friends that are in the same industry and that is what is really hard because I'm on it alone. So it's good to hear that you had people that can, you know, share their knowledge, talk about their experiences. But the one thing that kept me motivated is every year, I always say this, I go to this conference, it's called the Design Conference, and everyone that's famous there or really well known for their work, they they go on stage, they talk about their story, they talk about their journey. And you hear their story and you realise everyone is pretty much the same thing. They started small. No one knew who they were. They are working their ass off, designing day in, day out, trying to get, like, trying to discover their own style, essentially, discover who they are as a designer. And then they can get to a bigger place. And you see that and you just start to understand that everyone starts off in the same same place same position 
Yeah, of course. You've got to start from, you'd say, the ground and yeah. put yourself up, right? So it's all similar in, I guess, career growth. Or not even just career, but like life, right? Yeah, and then like how they explain trusting the process is, you know, rather than thinking of perfection, like in a design world, point of view what you see the end goal is having something really amazing everyone loves and it's like perfect in people in your audience's eyes but you know as you grow and learn and still do all that stuff you have to enjoy all the little milestones that you hit even though you know your first work is not going to be good like they say even like you have to go through all the shit ideas before you get to the good ideas that's how you design and you know, that's really true and you just got to believe in that and kin to it and don't think, yeah, it's shit work. Like you just got to embrace that and just keep working through, keep pushing through. Don't give up and get discouraged just because, yeah, one work is going shit. It's the same with our podcast. There might be some episodes that we weren't 100% on or we weren't happy with, but we still produce it and that helps us learn because we can then – understand what's good what's not what helped the audience and what didn't Mm, yeah and obviously talking about career growth and that sort of stuff one interesting thing that i i wouldn't say experienced but the environment that the workplace sort of set was they had these mottos that they would hang up on i guess you you'd say like the the walls and that sort of stuff like a little motivation. Yeah, motivation things. sort of stuff. So the the business is roughly like a, a wealth creation business. So they talk to clients and understand their position and try to help build their wealth through strategies and that sort of stuff. Every department has a key component where their skill set is a part of that process. Mm. So one of the mottos is is trust the process. Mm-hmm. The other motto is get shit done. Mm-hmm. Because in order for you to trust the process, you have to get shit done. Yeah. Right? So yes, there were certain key components in the process that was a bit, well, you could do it differently or you could do it better in some point of views. But – because the team and the environment was all about, okay, let's just set a, set a set process and let's trust it and follow that process. Mm. Because that set process starts from A to B, but as long as we get shit done within that process, we're going to hit that target. We're going to hit that result every yeah. single time. So coming from a corporate environment where there's none of that, there's no trust the process, there's no get shit done. It's all about hierarchy it's all about who you know within that area or department whereas in this environment it's more about a team environment it's all about trusting the process trusting the team getting shit done and ensuring that everyone is together to yeah get stuff so done. like teamwork and collaboration yeah. yeah which is quite similar to so my personal instagram i have progression over perfection that's how i've always seen life because if you're waiting for the perfect moment, there's actually no such thing. Like, there's no perfect moment. And if you're waiting for, like, the perfect moment, nothing gets done because you're always just self-criticizing or holding back or whatever it may be, and you have nothing. And just going back into the design industry, if you're waiting to either present or post or talk about your perfect piece of art, perfect piece of work, you will end up having nothing to show because you haven't even done anything to progress. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. And that's why there are certain people that always say, don't wait for the moment, Mm. create the moment. Yeah. Because you need to make that move, right? To Mm -hmm. to have that moment where you can go, okay, now it's time to move forward. Yeah. Another way to see it is like if you're waiting for the perfect moment or the perfect work of art, 
it's still subjective what you think is perfect someone else might still come along and be like that shit and if that person told you that is shit are you just going to delete your post or delete your artwork and remove that and then start again like you can't do that Mm. you just got to put it out in the world and learn from it and be like okay you know that there are some people who will never appreciate what you do or what you create or you learn that this artwork or your job you didn't actually do it as well so it's like what do i do next to make it better it's like there's different ways to learn so i always think there's never like a bad moment or a negative moment or negative things because in the end there is all always something that you learn from it mm, yeah and this this also applies to outside of work too right like yeah. even in your personal life you have to create that moment in order for you to move forward as an individual yeah right so it, it really does have an effect externally from mm. that Outside of that, what are your top tips on how to trust the process from what you've learned so far? I feel that if you have relationships and you've built relationships where people have experienced a similar route or end goal, it's really good to have a conversation with them because it gives you clarity as to how their experiences were. So kind of like lean on others, don't try and do it on your own. I wouldn't say lean on others, but to get a perspective of other experiences really does give you a better understanding as to how you can take your direction. Obviously not saying that you have to follow someone else's direction or their experiences. It's getting a perspective externally from how you feel. Mm. Because if you think about it, you're still unknown. You don't know if trusting that particular process going that direction is ultimately where you want to go. Mm. So it's good to have conversations with other people who have experienced that direction or goal to have a better understanding or clarity for you to sort of make that judgment. Mm. Which kind of links to like some of the stuff that you just said just then links to embracing the unknown. Because, again, like, you can't just wait for perfection. You don't know that, like, when that perfection is. Yeah. And just trusting in yourself and making progress. And even though it's an unknown territory, that's actually how you learn. Because if you're going to do something that you always know or something that you're comfortable with, you won't really learn much from that. Yeah, 100%. But then for yourself, how, what is your tips in terms of trusting the process? I think another one that I would add is, you know, always focus on the purpose. Like, rather than looking at the end goal, how I see it is I don't look at something as an end goal, like where I want to be. I don't want to be a famous artist or known for my designs or something like that. My purpose is making impactful designs that can help a business grow, help a business do what they need to do like either it's marketing or if it's like you know having a really great website where people can navigate it and know what they do either sell stuff and buy off their website things like that it's focusing on helping others and making an impact through that rather than being known for a famous designer like I don't really care about that so if you always focus on your purpose no matter how good or bad your work is or where you are at this point in time, you still have a purpose to work towards. Yeah. And I think on top of the purpose, I think it's important to also align the purpose to yourself as an Mm. individual because you as an individual, you need to grow as well. So you need to be sure that that purpose is what makes you feel comfortable because you you have to think about yourself too. Yeah, so, you know, rather than thinking of something that's more materialistic like becoming famous or, you know, being known in your industry, do something for yourself that you want and enjoy and something that can keep driving you because, again, if you lose that purpose – you know, there's really nothing that's motivating you to push forward and if – a challenge comes and hits you along the way of that journey, 
you can easily get discouraged or you might even give up because you didn't even have a purpose to work towards. Mm, yeah, yeah. I feel that the three key points that you we have just mentioned are probably the three most important ones. Mm, I wouldn't say so. Like I think some other ones that I would mention is, you know, being grateful and practice gratitude because – This is not really, you know, like a how-to thing, but if it just works in life. If you're grateful for all the little moments and all the little things that happen to you, especially when you're on a journey to somewhere where it can get challenging, if you practice gratitude, you're grateful for all the little things, like challenges that happen, rather than being like, oh, shit, why does this have to happen to me? It was like, oh, shit, my work is just not good enough and it's never good enough. But if you're thankful for having the opportunity of doing this small project that and appreciating a client coming to you and be like, oh, I want this small design, rather than being, why am I always getting these small designs? you appreciate that moment and that keeps you going but if you're gonna keep thinking negatively and you're not grateful for people coming to you that also can lead you to give up or be discouraged yeah and (coughs) just on from what i said the three topics the three advices or whatever it was that is true in what you said being having gratitude right understanding being in the trenches is another way of saying it, right? Being in the trenches, doing the dirty work and understanding that the small dirty things that you have to go through leads to a bigger thing because it's all mm-hmm. experience, right? Yeah. So what you said is really important too. In in order to grow as an individual and in order to get to that point of trusting the process, you need to experience all these small things that will build you up. And build your experience to that moment yeah. of that journey. And you see it in TV shows too. Like you see these, like, obviously it's like very dramatized, but you see really rich people who, or people who want to become rich or become a CEO, and they're like just, you know, hating the process. They're just like, no, nah, I'm going to do all the negative things. I'm going to hurt people. I'm going to knock people down, look down on people because they want to be seen as famous or the CEO or whatever and they will do anything and everything to get there and they're just hating the process. They're like, oh, this is not what I'm made to do. I didn't sign up or this is not my job. I'm not going to do this because I'm a manager or something like that. But then if you actually enjoy those little things, like you end up having so much fun. Like you meet people throughout the journey and, you know, you create personal jokes, inside jokes, or something happens and you just laugh it off. Whereas these people who only want to get to where they want to go to but don't enjoy the process, they hate anything and everything about that journey. Yeah, because they're so focused on that end goal. Mm that they don't realize what is involved to get to that end goal yeah and they end up having no one with them like they're just embarking that journey on their own because they've knocked everyone down like they're just looking down on these people i'm talking about the drama by the way i haven't experienced this in real life but the people who are in there to do the work they end up gaining good relationships great networking people end up helping them and giving them good advice. So what kind of drama were you referring to, just for the people to, <laughs> to know? I don't know. It's quite common in dramas. Oh, okay, right. So just in drama, like, so this is like a reality drama, like right? TV shows. Yeah, okay. Like no. you see the really rich people or like a rich son who will eventually become the CEO. Yeah. But someone else like the niece or nephew has a potential to actually become the CEO and they would just talk shit or do dirty stuff to that niece or nephew because they're like, no, this is my position and I deserve to be in this spot. But they haven't done any work at all and they're just like, no, I was born to be in this position. Like People like that don't enjoy the process. Yeah, and I think when people don't see the results – in a quick turnover time frame, mm. the, you know, they get they get discouraged yep. and, and they give up. And I think the, the biggest thing that – I just wanted to refer this to – for the listeners who've heard or watched a YouTuber called Max Tuning. 
Mm. So he's developed a, a apparel brand mm-hmm. called Move Forward or Ford or something like that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it's a pretty damn good mentality behind why he's done that. So it's all about moving forward in all aspects in life. So you growing as an individual, you going through all the shits, your ups and downs, your lows, your highs, all that sort of stuff. The whole point of life is to experience and to keep moving forward. Yeah, that's so true. And it's such an important inspiration. Inspiration, yeah. Quote. The, the quote is really important because I feel that we are sometimes so stuck in reality of this is my end goal. I'm not seeing the results or I don't trust the process to get there. Mm. They don't they don't appreciate that that moment. Yeah. As you said, gratitude. They just think of that end yeah. part and just give up kind of thing. Yeah, right? and even if you reach that end goal, if you're not enjoying the process or you don't focus on your purpose and you don't have gratitude, when you reach that end goal, you wouldn't even know what to do and you need to you know, like once you reach that end goal, it shouldn't be the end goal. That's why I don't use that word. You reach to a point like a milestone, but you have to still move forward because when you move forward, you continue to learn, you continue to grow. Yeah. Dialing back to my career, that really s- resonates with me because there was a period where I was not doing well. I was earning shit money. I was stressed out. Like... I had no idea as to whether this direction was the right way that I wanted to go. Mm. But meeting people, putting myself out in in uncomfortable positions, pulling the trigger to go to certain, I guess, meetings, BDs and PD days and that sort of stuff, meeting people and building relationships in that industry made me have a network of people where I can go back to them and go, hey, how did you do this or how did you do that? that really helped me when I'm sitting now here to this day. I'm like, well, shit, I'm, I'm thankful that, you know, I went through all that shit, that experience to understand, I guess, how people got to certain areas. Yeah. So that was you embracing the unknown and trusting the process because you as a person, you wouldn't have even gone out to the networking events and you trusting yourself and thinking, trusting the process and being believing that it would be beneficial. Yeah. It helped you. Yeah. And I think at that, at that forefront of that situation, it was scary, obviously, right? Because it's all unknown, uncharted territory. Mm. So it's given for people to naturally feel scared. Yeah. Which kind of links back to one of our episodes that we're talking about, like why people are scared of rejection and what we were saying, feeling the fear and scared of rejection. Like those are all temporary feelings. And once you've passed that and working past that and continue to move forward, like even though you're not getting to where you want to be, you are still in a better position than you not doing anything at all. Mm. It's like embracing the unknown, right? Mm. So, Yeah. And then one last one I wanted to put in is visualize your success so obviously not visualizing you getting like a whole wealth of money and fame and stuff but it's more like visualizing the success and achieving the milestones that you want to achieve which is working on your purpose and getting to where you visualize that to look like and I say this because it's kind it's a bit of manifestation like if you visualize it you kind of know and mentally plan out the little steps that you need to take to get there and you need to know some challenges that might happen and you work around that and you just understand the process a lot more than just not knowing anything and not visualizing it. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's, it is, like, like, like you said, it's very important to visualize where you want to be to some degree. Mm. Like... Even though, yeah, it may be an unknown territory, but it's also positive to have a idea as to that particular direction you want to be. Yeah. And it's actually 
I think it's a study, like, it, I don't know who wrote this, but it's the power of positive thinking, and it's a study that have found to have significant impact on people's outcome, especially when you have actively thought about it, which is something that we also mentioned in other podcasts, is, you know, when we're young, I think it was the advice about our younger selves to actively think about where you want to go like it doesn't have to be like I want to be an engineer it's more like five years time I want to be able to have a stable job or something like that and it's like how do I get a stable job I need to do this this and this so now you start to think about all the things that you need to do to get there Mm, yeah if you get what I mean yeah and it visualize all your potentials to help you bring your dream to reality that's a really good point to to hit on Mm. to sum it up I think Achieving your goals isn't meant to be easy. So that's why there are challenges that happen. And to, again, like I think we've mentioned this too, it's not a linear path. Like you have your ups, you have your downs, just like anything in life. So you might feel like you've got on a really good path, but then challenges happen and it might take you two steps back, but don't get disheartened. Like as long as you have a focus on your purpose and where you want to go and have that gratitude, just keep going, keep moving forward and, you know, eventually you'll get there. And another thing I wanted to point out is if you had a certain end goal or success milestone direction that you wanted to go to, if you enjoy the process, sometimes it might take you to a different direction and that's okay too. Like it might help you realize that, the end goal that you originally wanted to reach to wasn't exactly where you wanted to be. Like you thought you wanted to be there, but as you're enjoying the journey, you found something else that you enjoy a lot more than what you thought it was. And that's just as beautiful. And that's really important too, right? Is life is all about experiencing just things, right? Mm. And that's how you're going to grow. It's just going to be ups and downs you're going to be kicked to the ground you're going to be eating shit but then there's going to be moments where you kill you're a king you're a queen Mm. you know what i mean and that's just a fact of life Mm -hmm. and it's just bracing that and appreciating those moments that was good and bad yep so how to trust the process you said something like networking like leaning on your connections Leaning on your connections in putting yourself in those uncomfortable positions because Mm -hmm. you never know those uncomfortable positions or moments. It's basically going to help you. Mm -hmm. So, and then embrace the unknown, focus on your purpose, practice gratitude Mm. and visualize success. Yep. Visualize where your ideal goal is mm, so that you can put out the little steps that you'd yeah, want to take to gives get you that there. clarity to to know your direction clarity yeah <laughs> 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 all right i think that's it for how to trust the process and hopefully this has helped you if you're embarking on a journey that is a little scary but we've all been there i'm still in there and you know just enjoy it yeah, I'm still there too. So even for me, I'm I'm still trying to push through and figure out things as I go. Mm, we're in it together, guys. We're yeah, in, in it, it to together. win it. <laughs> in it to win it, guys. <laughs> and <Hashtag>. also, <laughs> <laughs> and before we end it off, I remembered it's ever forward. That's Max Tuning's clothing apparel. Mm. So if you guys can have a look, check it out. His YouTube mm. and it's really good content and his foundation of why he's developed that business. Doesn't he also have a sour strip thing? Sour strips. Yeah, sour strips. Yeah, so sour it's, strip. it's, yeah, it's sour candy in America only, mm. and he's doing fucking well. Yeah, so. what an ins- inspirational guy. Mm. Like, I really love watching people grow their business and their story. That's what motivates me to keep going. Mm. So find people that inspire you and, yeah, learn from them or gain knowledge from them yeah 100% that's it and that's a wrap (laughs) see ya boy thank you so much if you have reached to the end we really appreciate you for tuning in and if you'd like what you hear please share it with your friends or family and subscribe to our podcast on whatever platform you are listening to
Make sure you share any topics you'd like us to cover or questions you might have to our Instagram. Slide it into our DMs. Bigger, bigger. You can also stay in the loop of all the behind the scenes and the release of our new episodes there too. Our Instagram is Ask the Duo Podcast. That's A S K T H E D U O P O D C A S T. Man, feels like I'm in a spelling bee competition right now. <laughs> All right, that's it for now, and we'll see you back here for our next episode. Bye. See ya. Bye.